What's up, millennials? Instead of screwing Juliet, Romeo seems to be screwing us, and it doesn't really feel so good. Romeo is 18% down today after yesterday's earnings call. Today I listened to that earnings call, or well, the 15 minutes of the earnings call, and then 45 minutes of questions from investors. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what happened exactly, what we can expect in the future, and also what I am personally going to do. The only part I really liked about this earnings call were the first 12 minutes where we heard the beautiful voice of Abby, the operator of this call. 20 financial results call. My name is Abby and I'll be coordinating your call today. A while ago I did a video about Romeo and I was talking about the investor presentation where they said they were expecting to have 11 million dollars in revenue in 2020 and 140 million dollars in revenue in 2021. Well, during today's earnings call, we heard that we didn't get that revenue of 11 million in 2020, but we got only $9 million. But that was not the worst. The worst was the guidance for this year for 2021. They cut that all the way from 140 million to, wait for it, a range of 18 to $40 million for the entire year. So the major problem here is battery cell shortage. As they call it, as global demand for raw materials outpaces supply, Romeo Power is subject to a significant shortfall in cell capacity industry-wide and expects now the revenue for 2021 to be in a range of 18 to 40 million dollars. So Romeo says they don't have enough battery cells to create enough batteries to create 140 million dollars in revenue. But the demand is, of course, growing, and we, of course, all know that electric vehicles are going to be sold more and more in the future. And it's kind of weird to hear during the earnings call that Romeo actually said that this battery cell shortage was unexpected. The semi-good news is that Romeo still has a backlog of $544 million in contracted revenue, the majority coming from the Line Electric, uh, which is $234 million, but also a large portion of Nikola, $210 million. And of course, we don't really know if Nikola is actually going to be able to produce their vehicles in the end. But the number they mentioned today, $544 million in backlog revenue, is exactly the same as the number in the investor presentation from November 2020. So that hasn't changed yet. We don't have extra contracted revenue for Romeo. And they were also talking about that $2.2 billion in revenue in the pipeline, but we just don't know if that is actually going to turn out to be contracted revenue. We don't know when this is going to occur. And the thing is here again, from November 2020 until now, March or even April 2021, we have not seen an increase in this contractor revenue, nor the pipeline. So what about Romeo's future? Well, I'll try to replicate the words and the tone of what Romeo said during the call. We could not be more excited about our future. We also don't know exactly what is going to happen in the longer term future. So in like two years, three years, four years, because Romeo was not able to talk about that just yet. So I'm not so confident about Romeo's execution anymore. It looks like the investor presentation, well, we can just throw it out of the window. And I'm wondering, is this also an issue, a broader issue for the entire EV market? Because it looks like EV companies might also suffer from this battery shortage and that they also might suffer from the sh chip shortage, of course. And yeah, this is definitely going to be an issue, especially for the non-vertically integrated companies. So what about Romeo's current valuation then? Well, let's take a look at a few numbers that were given to us during the earnings call. First of all, we can see that currently they have $292 million in net cash on their balance sheet. And this is something that the CEO of Romeo seemed to want to highlight quite a few times, especially in one answer for a certain question about the cash burn. He said that they were very well capitalized. I think he said that five times within one minute. But the problem is we don't know exactly how high the cash burn is going to be. And with the cash burn, I mean how much cash they are going to burn through this year. It looks like it's going to be likely that we're going to get an update somewhere in Q2 about this cash burn. And what about the amount of outstanding shares then? Well, according to the earnings call, we have currently about 127 million shares outstanding. So that means with the current price per share of $8.54, the market cap is almost $1.1 billion. And if you subtract the amount of net cash they currently have, the enterprise value is about $800 million. 
Also keep in mind there are still some warrants outstanding, so there are some people that could exercise their warrants to get in total I believe about 7.65 million shares in return, so that would be added to the amount of outstanding shares, but of course that also leads to a higher cash position. I believe they said they were going to get $88 million in cash if all people exercised their warrants. So what about the fair valuation for Romeo? Well, it's going to be very shaky because first of all, when I did the valuation video for Romeo, I believe back in December 2020, we were looking at the numbers of 2025 and we were looking at Romeo's revenue, expected revenue, of course, of $1.65 billion. Now, if you take into account that for this year, instead of 140 million, they have a range of expected revenue between 18 and 40 yeah, $40 million, then of course, the other years could also be very, very different. So I'm kind of wondering if they are ever going to achieve that $1.65 billion in revenue in 2025. So back in December, when we did that valuation video, we looked at that revenue of 1.65 billion. We applied a multiple or a range of multiples of 5x on the low end, 9x on the high end. And then we got to these fair prices per share. So for the midpoint valuation, it would have been $46 per share. But of course, that is based on the current amount of shares. It is probably going to be higher in the end. And of course, the revenue, well, it's very likely that is going to be lower in the end. And the question is how much lower because if for now they are expecting 18 to 40 million dollars in revenue instead of 140 million dollars in revenue well if they now are going to get like i don't know maybe 300 million dollars in revenue instead of 1.65 billion dollars in revenue then you would already have these fair prices per share of almost 10 dollars per share as a midpoint valuation so is the entire investor presentation just something very misleading or is Romeo actually experiencing a very unexpected battery cell shortage? I of course don't know for sure, but it seems like the numbers of the investor presentation are a little bit inflated. I'm very curious if they're ever going to achieve $1.65 billion, especially within like five years time. And they also find it kind of weird that Romeo did not see this battery cell shortage coming. Now, one question I do ask myself and one question I would like to ask you as well is if other SPACs are going to do exactly the same thing, are going to inflate the numbers of their investor presentations and then in the end are not going to be able to achieve those numbers, are the SPACs actually going to go down and down over time and is the SPAC market actually dead? Because the problem is if you put all of these inflated numbers in your investor presentation and you're not going to be able to achieve these numbers, the confidence of the investors is going to go away very quickly. So what am I going to do personally? Or actually, what have I already done personally? Well, I actually had a small swing trade in Romeo, as you might know. I had a small percentage of my portfolio dedicated to this swing trade, and I closed it today for a nice loss, of course. It was a good lesson for me, I think, because I wanted to right now reevaluate my swing trade strategy. It was very focused on the valuations that I've done in the past, but I think I want to go back to adding more technical analysis within my swing trade strategy strategy because if I would have listened to the technical analysis, I definitely could have saved myself some money. And for the past couple of weeks, I've also been thinking more and more about my SPAC strategy, as you might know. I've done a few videos about that, talking about what kind of SPACs I'm currently looking for, but it's definitely not the kind of SPAC that Romeo is representing. Companies that do not have a proven track record, that do not have a very good amount of revenue, that don't really have a certain, certain proven business model just yet. So I'm right now looking for those more safer SPACs if you will, companies that do have a proven track record, companies that do have that kind of revenue like Paysafe or the Beachbody companies like that. So I'd like to hear from you as well. Are you holding Romeo still? Are you going to sell it? Let me know in the comments. And with that being said, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and to hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.